Welcome back to H3 Weapon Deep Dive. Today's the big day. We're finally doing it. We are doing the M4 Carbine Series. Yes, we've got four M4s to choose from here in the spawner in H3. We're going to be taking a look at all four of them. We're going to start here in Home SMG Rifle Carbine M4A1 Classic. They, of course, are all chambered in 5.56 by 45 NATO. All take Stanag magazines. I have a video on all the Stanag magazines linked in the description. We've got the M4A1 Classic. We've got the M4A1 Shorty, which is this guy. Compared to the Classic. It is shorter, so it's called the shorty. What else we got? We've got the, in the spawner, we've got right here, M4A1, just plain old M4A1. So we got some extra rails on the handguard on this guy. And we've got the left hook. We are here, M4A1 left hook. Well, this is a left-handed model. Everything is flipped on it. So you've got... Your ejection port is on the left side, so if you're lefty, you're not eating brass. Isn't that cool? Could get more of these. <laughs> well, we've got four to look at. Let's get started. Let's check them out. Here we go. We're going to start with the M4A1 Classic. We've got some controls to look at here. We've got a collapsible stock you can click on the butt pad with your trigger and move it back and forth is that a butt pad if there's no pad on it well there's just a butt <laughs> you can even see the buffer tube there at the end that's cool left on the trackpad of course is our selector switch we've got safe semi and full auto on this one what else do we have well there's our magazine well there's our magazine and well where's our Ah, oh, there it is. There's our charging handle right down the middle. There's our bolt. There's our dust cover that pops open manually. You can also click it with the trigger, open and close it. What else do we have on this bad boy? Well, let's see what it looks like when you shoot it. All right, we'll lock open on empty. Down in the trackpad, we'll eject the magazine. Is there a new magazine? And you can press up on the trackpad to close the bolt. Or you can press the bolt release button like so whoops <laughs> let me show you that again like that you don't have to click anything just get your hand near the little paddle there and it'll close it also has a bolt hold open if you pull the charging handle back and press to the right on the trackpad it'll actually hold the bolt back for you like that up on the trackpad will release it ah isn't that cool moving on to the shorty We've got the same deal here. We've got left in the trackpad for safe, semi, and full auto. We've got our collapsible stock here. We've got our magwell, got our magazine, got our center line charging handle, our dust cover, all the goodies, all the goodies. Holds the bolt open when you press right on the trackpad up to release it. Yep, anything weird? Well, the charging handle's a little bit different looking, but functionally it's the same. But yeah, it's the same. Onto the M4A1 version 2. Again, the charging handle is a little bit different on this one. Stock looks a little different, but the functionality is exactly the same. Magwell is here. Safe, semi, and full auto. Centerline charging handle. There's our bolt, the whole deal. Again, locks open. Down on the trackpad, check the magazine. Everything is the same. Oh, and by the way, the uh, little forward assist here doesn't do anything. It's just not implemented in the game because jamming isn't implemented in the game, at least uh, not without mods. So that's what you got. Let's take a look at the left hook. It's the same as the version 2, except everything's flipped around backwards. So our selector switch is on the other side. We've got safe, semi, and full auto. There's our stock. There's our charging handle, which is now flipped around. And there you can see it ejects off the left side like so. But everything else is the same. Look at that. Handy dandy. Let's see what attachments will fit on the classic. We've got a rail on top. Goes the full length of the upper receiver. Ends at the handguard there. And we can put whatever little Picatinny red dot, whatever the heck we want up there. That is the only rail on the classic, however. Let's see what will fit on the barrel. Where's my muzzle brake? Muzzle brake will go. Where's my suppressor? 
Suppressor will go, of course. Barrel extension. Yep. And rail adapter. Yes, you can get rails on it that way. How about the all-important battle spatula will go on the barrel. No problem. How about uh, the M9 bayonet? Where's the M9 bayonet going to go? There it goes. <laughs> I knew it goes on there somewhere. M9 bayonet is purpose built for the M4 series. Confusingly, the M4 bayonet does not go on the M4. You need the M9 bayonet. That's this, this guy. What else we got? We've got the 203 underbarrel grenade launcher. This is the classic one, M203 classic here. And it goes like that. How cool is that? Now you've got an underbarrel grenade launcher. There is a Picatinny rail version of it. It does not go there because there's no Picatinny rail on the underside. How about foregrip, extra foregrip? Nope, because there's no rail there and it's already got a stock. So you don't need another stock. So there you go. Moving on to the V2 version. You've got more rails this time. So we've still got that same top rail going the length of the receiver, but now we've got a quad rail handguard on there. Slick as can be, top, bottom, left, and right rails. So you got all those options to play with, which means you can put a foregrip down there if you want. I'm gonna take that off for now. Where is my muzzle brake? Muzzle brake will go. Suppressor. Suppressor will go. Barrel extension will go, and the rail adapter, because you need more rails. That'll go as well. How about battle spatula? We'll go on the barrel, no problem. The classic 203 will not go on there, but, whoa, as you can imagine, the pick rail one will go there, so you can use that one instead. The 203 classic, as far as I can tell, only goes on the classic M4. I don't know if it goes on an M16, but we'll cover it when we get to the M16, right? Okay, what else we got on here? Bayonet. Where's that bayonet going? Come on, you can do it. No? There it is. Way out there. There's your M9 bayonet on there. Ah, cool. We already got a stock. Don't need another one. So that's the V2. Let's look at the shorty. Well, basically the same as the V2. Still got your full length rail on the top of the receiver and your quad rail handguard, but it's a lot smaller. How about the barrel? Is the barrel the same? Yep, barrel is the same. So you can put your muzzle brake, you can put your suppressor, you can put your barrel extension, you can put your rail adapter for even more rails. You can put your foregrip down on the bottom or on the side if you really want to. You can put your spatula on there. Can you put the bayonet on there? Ooh, so there's the lug, right? No, that ain't happening. I don't know if you can get it on there with a barrel extension. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's going to go. The classic, of course, won't go on there. But the pick rail, yeah, the pick rail 203. <laughs> doesn't look like it belongs there, but it will attach and work because it's H3. Already got a stock, so don't need another one. So there's the shorty. Finally, the left hook won't really cover it because it's exactly the same as the V2. Got your quad rail, got your top rail, and everything fits on the barrel, and such and such and so forth. It's just the V2 flipped around horizontally. Let's take a look at our sights, starting with the classic. And as you can see right off the bat, we got a bit of a problem. We've got a big, tall front post on here and nothing in the rear when it comes out of the spawner. So the idea here is you grab one of these guys, handle sight M4. Now there was another handle sight called M16A4. We'll take a look at what that is in a second, but you want the M4 one on there, attach it to the top rail. Now you got your rear sight set up correctly. There you go. Now, hello. It does not like taking on and off these handle sights. If you put the M16 on there, how does that line up? Low. So the M16 and as far as I can tell, all the backup irons, all the other irons in the game uh, do not line up correctly with the M4 Classic. So those aren't going to work. So just use this M4 handle sight. Which, did I get the right one? They look identical. Yeah, okay, I got the right one. Use the M4 handle sight. Now, can you attach other stuff to it? Yes, you can. This is the 3x20 what is it called? 3x20 M16 scope? Yeah, you can attach that to the top of the handle sight like that. Now you've got some magnified optics up there. 
which are not adjusted correctly as far as I can tell. Anyway, what about an ACOG? No, you can't put an ACOG up there. God, it really doesn't like those. Let's see what an ACOG looks like here. Okay, it barely gets over that front post, but it does. So you can make the ACOG work on the M4 Classic. That is an option. Finally, let's try a low profile red dot. This is not gonna be ideal. Yeah, it's gonna go right through that front post, but because I have two eyeballs, I can kind of see around that front post and it will work, which is not the best. Moving on to the V2. Now you've got some rear sights that comes with in addition to that giant front post, let's take a look at, okay, there's a lot going on here. That's a very small rear aperture and a very tiny front post. Let's see if I can make that work though. Yeah, that is icky. If you click on it, it will fold down. There is no second aperture on this one, but it will fold down and get out of the way if you, say, want to put something else on here, like, let's say, a low-profile red dot. Same problem as the M4 Classic. Of course, it doesn't get up over that front sight, but if you take an elevated one, it will work. Let's take a look at the ACOG. Uh, ACOG's much better. It will get up over that front sight completely now because that front sight is a little lower than on the Classic. Oh, yeah, the tube on the bottom of the ACOG is blocked, though. What else we got? Is this the M4 handle sight? Because I can never tell the difference. M4 handle sight. Okay, you can put it on there. It will not make the uh, rear sight disappear, though. But you can put it on there. Let's see how this one does. I don't think this is... Yeah, this is not lined up correctly. So the M4 handle sight is really just for the Classic, not for the other guys. Let's see if this M16 one works here. Okay, gets up over. Oh, it's really high. Yeah, so that's not not the appropriate site for that either, but you could use it in a pinch if you absolutely had to. How about some backup irons? That's what are these? Let me click that one. There we go. That's a little better. No, those are too high as well. So I think these are the A2. Yeah, the A2 iron sights. Those don't work either. However, I think there is an iron site in the spawner that will work. So if you don't like those backup iron sights, you can spawn the HK416 uh, iron sight, which is one of those little drum iron sights, a little V notch, or you can switch it to an aperture. These are lined up correctly with the M4 V2. Moving on to the shorty, same deal as the V2, except the because the barrel's shorter, the front iron is of course closer to the rear. Again, the rear will fold down if you click it, but there's only one aperture, which stinks. Ugh. Helps if I have some bullets in there, doesn't it? There we go. Oh boy. Okay, so that does work, technically. Let's see what we can get on there with the 416. Yeah, that's much nicer. Not the best, oh, there we go. That's a little better. Yeah, I like those better than the ones that comes with. Give me that. Okay, 416. Let's try this. God, which is which? Okay, this is the M16 handle sight. Let's try this one. No way off. Okay. Let's try the M4 handle sight. Oh, yeah. It's not, not set up for this. Yeah, that is... That ain't gonna work. So, those only work on the... Give me... Gosh. Oh! Let's try the ACOG. ACOG looks good. Yeah, there we go. ACOG gets well up over that front sight, so that works just nicely. Any of the elevated ones are going to work, but these low-profile guys... Ugh, well, <laughs> that really ain't going to work. Low profiles are a little rough. But hey, red dot's a red dot, right? Finally, the left hook is the same as the V2 because it's... Uh, Symmetrical uh, on the top up there. I won't bother covering it. So it's it's the same as the V2 Let's do our recoil test starting with the classic. We got 30 rounds of 556 by 45 NATO Here we go Okay, a couple tens out of the gate 8.53 average pretty good nice group too moving on to our muzzle brake 
Looking good there. 913, so a definite improvement with the muzzle brake. On to the suppressor. Ooh, that looked pretty good. Yeah, a lot of tens there. 9.4 average. Fantastic. On to the V2. How do we do? 8.13 average. Not quite as good as the classic. I did a few runs there, and this doesn't quite have the same quality of recoil as the classic does. Hmm. On to our muzzle brake. That improved a lot. 8.93, call it a 9. Yeah, and it went back to the 10. So yeah, dramatic improvement with the muzzle brake. On to the suppressor. There we go. 8.47. Hmm, a little better than not having a suppressor on there, but not as good as I was hoping for. Finally, let's do the shorty. All over the place, very drifty, but in the beginning, lots of tens, 8.9 average. On to the muzzle brake. Well, that seemed really good, 9.77. What is going on with the reek? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Holy smokes. You know what? I think the shorty's the best one of the bunch. And finally, the suppressor. Well, <laughs> would you take a look at that? That's a lot of tens out of a full auto intermediate round. 9.73, smoking. Shorty's the way to go. There you have it, the M4 series of carbines. Well, they're in the carbine category when you get to do. Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look at the rails. I love it. I love it. Till next time, I will see ya. Oof. Bye-bye.